Okay, so here we are in um, November 9th. We're going to continue on in chapter 12. Um, we are skipping over 11. 11 is um, those uh, relations and family tables. And honestly, um, it's probably one of the subjects that isn't going to be consistently at uh, companies. So some companies, if they work with families of parts, meaning like, you know, it's the same kind of base part, but then one or two dimensions change to make the different part numbers. It's a great chapter for that. But those are kind of few and far between. So I'm skipping over chapter 11. It's there for you if you want to go over it independently, but we're not going to bring it in as part of the class. We're going to focus more on the definite uh, thing that you're going to be doing um, when you're out in industry, and that's working on creating good drawings. So that's chapter 12, and that's what we're working on here. You'll notice in our learning plans, I do have a new uh, folder here for chapter 12, which is on tolerancing and GD and T. And, um, and then as we look here, um, I want to just show you there is a folder here for tutorial and program or uh, problem guides. Basically what this is, is this is how I want your final product to look like when you hand it in to me. Um, and when you take like your screenshot and, and send in your PDF. So for the first one here, you'll notice it says base tutorial guide. This is the first tutorial that I'm having you guys do as part of your grade in chapter 12. And, um, and this is the final drawing that I want you to use, not the drawing that they have in the book. He has mistakes. Um, the way that he's doing GDNT is not consistent with um, good practices. So what I did was I made it the way that it, that it should be. So yesterday when we got together, we um, did a demo of this. It didn't go real good, but, um, but we'll, have a, we'll have a video out here for this one. But, um, but I want to actually go over today the cover plate tutorial. And there, too, I do have some changes to how, um, how the author had um, the final drawing. And you'll find that as well here on the cover plate. I'm actually going to put it up here because it's the second tutorial. The cover plate tutorial guide. And again, this is the final product that I want you to try to achieve. Um, the way that I have it here is how I put it on, and obviously everybody dimensions just a little bit differently. So what you'll want to do is you'll just want to make sure that all of these elements are on there in the format here. But if you slide them around and you put them in different places, as long as the spirit is the same here, okay? And um, so this is the one that we're going to demo right now. And I'll show you the process and, and how to get things um, arranged the way that we need to. Again, the tutorial is in here. It's, it's a good, good to follow along and get kind of the basics of how to put things in place. But as far as the final drawing, this is the arrangement that I want you to use instead of how, um, how the author has it. Okay, so let's go into Rio. All right, so um, Creo has not been my friend lately, so I'm hoping Creo cooperates. Um, again, not using it as an excuse, it's actually, it's been reality lately. So, so we'll, we'll take our time and go a little slower so that hopefully, um, hopefully things go smoothly. So we are going to actually start a new drawing and I already drew up the model for the cover plate. So I'm not gonna take time here to do that model. So I'm gonna jump right into drawing and the name is going to be cover plate, okay, underscore as you know. And um, the part number that they have assigned here in this tutorial is 212120. And I'm gonna hit okay. Then I'm going to um, go into my working directory and find my cover plate art, which is right here. I do open and then my template for my um, drawing border is going to be the two view drawing border. I'm using the LTCA drawing border. I do have those in a folder um, in this class uh, on the kind of that first page and um, you'll notice that it has the new LTC logo. So I have those, I have those uploaded here. Okay, so this is what comes in. It's gonna populate with all of our um, dimensions and such. And so a couple of things that, and it, and it suggests as we go through, if you go through the tutorial at the beginning here to kind of get things cleaned up a little bit. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get rid of um, the axes and the planes, which kind of takes care of things already. And then I'm gonna go down here to this, this um, menu and we're gonna select annotation, okay? And what it does is I'm gonna put 
like this imaginary box around all the dimensions to select them. Okay, so I'm upper left hand corner, I'm clicking with my left mouse button and I'm dragging down to the lower right and it's selecting all of the, um, of the dimensions. So I'm gonna just hit my delete key on my keyboard to get rid of them, okay? So I want like a fresh slate, if you would. They're not gone, I didn't delete them. It's just from the drawing part here, I've gotten them out. And then I'm gonna go back down here and I'm gonna go back to general, okay? And then I'm just gonna zoom in and out and you'll notice my, my views are left. It's just that the, um, the dimensions have gone, okay? Because I wanna actually kind of pull them in one by one, if you would. So now um, I have this here. Now I may want to move because when I when I, my park comes in, it puts it, it drops it in where that front view and that right view um, I had when I set up my template. So I'm going to unlock the view movement here and I'm just going to click on that front view and I'm going to kind of move it over to the left a little bit and take the right. I'm going to activate that and I'm going to move that over to the right. Okay. And, and I could, I, there's only two views here, so I can lock it again, and then now I can't move my views. And sometimes that's nice to do, just in case you move things around, that it doesn't, it doesn't go anywhere. So that looks like a good placement. I can always move these again later if I need to. Uh, but for right now, I'll leave it right there. So now I'm ready to, to start putting my, um, my center lines in is where I'm gonna start. So I'm gonna go to Annotate tab on the top, and I'm going to select my front view, and I can either show annotations, model annotations by the icon up here, or when I click this view, it's the second little icon here um, in the menu that comes up. So it's, it's close to my cursor, I'm just gonna click there. And the first tab on this show model annotations are the dimensions, but I'm gonna skip over those. I'm gonna go all the way to the last tab, okay? And these are the center lines. So you'll notice that it just popped in all of the center lines in that view. And what I need to do to keep them there is actually click on each one of these where it says show, then hit apply, and then now we can hit cancel to go out of there, and they stay. If you go out of there before clicking on the show or the apply, when you go out of that menu, your, these center lines are going to disappear. So, um, so that's something to keep in mind. Now, once I have them here, I do wanna connect the center line so that I can see that they're in line. So all I need to do is go over the top of one, activate it with my left mouse button, and I'm gonna take this and I'm, I'm just over the top of it and I click with my left mouse button and I'm dragging this all the way over, okay? And that's, that's it. Then I'm gonna do the same thing in this orientation. I'm gonna go up with it so that I can, wait, where am I? There we go. <laughs> in the way this one over here again left click and then I'm going to drag and release when I get it where it's supposed to go and then this one up here okay so that looks good so now I've got um I've got those all in line with one another okay make sure that you do do that that's good practice because that way when we dimension on just one side um one of the holes it then shows that it it, it goes in line with the other one and that the dimension would continue to apply Let's put the center lines in our side view. So I'm gonna click on my side view, go to the show annotations, and it kind of remembers that tab that it was on, so notice that they're there. And I am just gonna show two of them, that one, and I think, okay, not that one. I wanna make the other one dark, okay. Right now, the way that it's there, if I would show all four of them, I would have two center lines on top of one another. And as you know, really not good practice. So I'm just gonna choose two of them and the ones that are gonna be in each place here. When they turn dark, when I click on it, that's when I know. So the other two are left here, that's okay. Cancel because I've got two of them in place there. And they're not, there's not one in back of the other. Okay, so that's, um, those are my center lines. So it's probably not a good, bad idea uh, based on my luck lately. Um, I'm gonna do a, a quick save here into my uh, working directory. All right. Now, the other thing that you'll notice is I think my views could be a little bit bigger on here. So I'm gonna change the scale. And down here in the lower right, you can actually click on this gray scale right here. This is the scale of the drawing. I'm gonna double click on that. And at the top, it's gonna want me to put the scale in. So I'm gonna put it at 0.25. I think that's a better, oh, look at that. And my, uh, my lines did not scale with it. So what I need to do is I'll go back here and I'll just extend these back over same way that I did them before. And up, and over, and up. 
There we go. There we go. Okay. So now they're now they're in there. Good. Okay. So now I'm ready to really start dimensioning. All right. And um, and to do that, I'm going to go back to my front view here, and I'm going to click on the show model annotations, and I'm going to go back to that first tab, and it's going to clutter all of the dimensions when I created it as a model on there. And it's it actually remembered from when I've been practicing uh, preparing for class. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a couple of things here. I'm gonna select the dimensions that I want to keep. I know that I want to keep the 12 inch dimension. Notice that it, it goes black and it actually X's out here or it puts the, the check mark in automatically. I'm going, I'm gonna need my eight, my two, my five, five, my five. Five, there we go. And I'm gonna I'm gonna grab this guy over here. I don't need each one of the two inch radius. I need this two inch dimension. I need the nine. And then I also need the uh, call up for the hole. And I'm gonna hit apply. Okay. Now it's and then when I hit cancel, it's gonna get rid of the ones I did not select. So it's gonna remember what I did here. So before um, before we really start uh, looking at each one of the dimensions, let me just uh, kind of get things back to where they're so where they originated. So just bear with me for just a second. There's, it must save it to the actual model when it does this. And, um, and I tried to get it that uh, it was, that those were gone, but it didn't, it, it's too smart. It's just too smart. It's that parametric nature of the software that it, um, that it remembers this stuff <laughs> from that same model. Let me get out of here. And I want to start. I want to start clean so that you can see the full process. Okay. So these would be the draw the dimensions, those nominal dimensions, as I would have gotten them or created them through the model. Okay. Now what I want to do is, as I look at my drawing that I want the final product to be, and again, use mine, not the one that's in the book. Okay. Again, to put the put to put the uh, feature control frames in place or create the basic dimensions, the, the, the instructions are good, but the final drawing itself, um, I'm, like I said, I'm deviating from, from what they did to, uh, to be more in line with uh, better practices that, uh, that we've used. So, um, so what we want to do is we're first going to put our dimensions, kind of just like not the GD&T, not worrying about GD&T, just put the, the, the dimensions around here, the sizes of the holes, of the outside, of the plate and such, and then we'll add the GD&T after. So I'm gonna focus on getting those in place. Um, I'm gonna go back to Creo here. So I've got my 12 inch dimension. I'm gonna pull that down over here. Okay, and again, just kind of duplicating uh, the drawing that, um, that I have. Now you'll notice that when I slide them down and I put them over the top of the, what they call those snap lines, it's nice to have those because that way if we have other dimensions that are along that same line, they're going to be exactly on that line. So I've got the two inch, the eight inch, the 12 inch, the nine inch is good, the five and the two. I'm gonna pull that up a little bit because it seems a little crowded. And I'm gonna switch the arrow to the, oops. So. more time switch the arrow there we go I'm gonna go that way with it and I'm gonna put the arrow back in that way okay so we can see that and then I'm gonna scooch this guy now this was the one I had some difficulty with yesterday and I did try to play with it later but um, I couldn't unattach it from that hole for some reason so we're just gonna live with it <laughs> and we're gonna go with uh, with what it's got there so I'm gonna leave that there now now that I have these kind of pulled away and where I want them to go, okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, first of all, looking to see the end of these dimensions. I want them a little bit closer, but there does need to be a gap, right? These I'm going to leave here because of the fact that we have the extension line for, or the leader line for that radius going there. So it, I think it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory where each of those dimensions are going. This dimension here for the eight inch, I'm gonna go to the end here. I just activate it with my left mouse button and then I go over the top here. And once I get to where it actually stops, I can drag that down. So I have my left mouse button, I'm dragging and then I'm gonna release 
when I create that little bit of a gap. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, and then release. Oops. When it when it gets down to where it goes, I think the number two one. I got to activate the number two. I just clicked on it with my left mouse button. I'm going to bring that guy down here too. Okay, there we go. And then the end of this part. There we go. Okay, that's in place. So that looks good. That looks good. This guy I've got to bring over this two inch dimension so that there's a gap. And there's a gap here. Now. And the five inch looks like it needs to gap here and right about there. And those are just kind of eyeballing, you know, exactly where they're at. But we don't want to be over the top or onto the parts with our extension lines. Okay, let's look at our diameter of 0.875 here. So if we go underneath, you'll notice that we need to put in the limits, okay, the limits for that dimension. So it's 0 0.880 to 0 0.875, and we need to add in front of it the four by because it represents all four holes. So, um, so let me go over to Creo, and um, and again, I'm gonna I'm gonna default to the location like I have in the middle here, even though on mine, it, again, it's really just making sure that we get the hole. Uh, call out the same, and if you position it differently, that's okay, as long as it's still um, the spirit of the standard, okay? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to change this up. Now, first of all, I need this to be limit dimensions. So I'm going to click on it to activate it, become green. I'm in this dimension tab here, and over here by the tolerance, I'm going to change this to limits, okay? Change it to limits. Now, it's in line right here right now, okay? It's in line I want it to be top to bottom, okay? So the way I do that is I'm going to, while it's still activated, it's green, I'm going to go to display. And the display menu is going to come up, and I'm just going to click on this ISO tolerance display style, and it goes top bottom, okay? And I'm just going to click outside of this, and that's all that I need to do for that. Now, I'm going to re-click on it because I need to get my two by there. So the dimension uh, ribbon comes back up, and I'm going to go to dimension text. And this is where I can put a prefix. So I'm going to click in front. I'm going to get my icon. You can, you can do the left uh, arrows, left or right arrows, but I'm in front of the diameter symbol. I need to put four by. And this needs to be all caps and then a space. And then you can continue after the dimension if you needed to, all right? But I don't need to. You'll notice that when I clicked over here, I can see that that's exactly what I want. So I'm just going to click outside here and I'm and I'm good to go. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to add in my right side view here my one inch uh, thickness dimension. I need to do that yet. So I'm going to click over here and I'm going to I'm going to activate or show these model annotations. And when I look, the only dimension there is the one inch dimension. So I'm just going to click on it to activate it and hit apply and cancel. Now, for this one, I'm going to activate it by left-clicking on it, and I need to bring, I don't like that that, that window kind of shows up, but i got to bring my little ends down to create my gap. It's in line as close as possible. Okay. All right, so there's my, there are all my, basically my dimensions before the GD&T. Okay, so now I'm ready to add the GD&T. I'm going to do a quick save here just because <laughs> and then um, and then I'm going to start with basic dimensions so as you recall from gd &T, basic dimensions are anything that has a box around them so the basic dimensions are going to be the two the five the eight and the two okay those are the basic dimensions these are super easy to do all we're going to do is we're going to activate that dimension we're going to go up to tolerance and we're going to call it basic, and it's going to put the box around for me. So nice. I'm going to go here to number five, activate it, make it green, basic dimension. The two, basic dimension, and the eight, basic dimension. Okay, so that looks good. Then I want to add um, my feature control frames. So I'm going to start with uh, datum A. It's over in the right side over here. So if we go back here, I'm going to put this feature control frame for flatness on this surface right here, 
and the, um, and the datum A. Now, there's two ways we can do this, all right? So I'm gonna click on, when I'm in the annotate uh, menu here, or ribbon, I'm gonna click on the geometric tolerance, okay? And you'll notice that when I come down here, it's gonna have a feature control frame like attached to my cursor. Now, if I go next to a, a surface like this, it's gonna add a leader to it, and I could just click right there and it's gonna place that, that um, feature control frame. And that's great, you can, you can go ahead and do it here. I like to put mine by the dimension, okay? I like to put mine by the dimension. So what I'm gonna do is, you're gonna notice that when I get close here, it's gonna, it's gonna go you know, by the, they're calling it a witness line or the extension line. And I just wanna click on that, all right? If I do that, it's gonna do the leader, all right? I don't want that, all right? So what I actually want, I'm gonna escape here one more time. I'm actually going to put it right on that um, extension line, really close, okay? Now, I can, I'll be able to zoom in here and move it when, I, when and if I need to, because it's not quite there, but I'm gonna just kind of eyeball it for right now. When I place it, it recognizes that, okay, you probably don't want what we just put there because we just remembered from the past what was there before, okay? So now I can put in my details. So I can, for that first box, I need to put in flatness, Okay, so it changes it automatically. And then I'm gonna put my value for fat flatness of 0 0.004, okay? Now it's a, it's a form tolerance box, so it's not gonna have any datums, it's not gonna have a diameter symbol or an MMC modifier because it's, it's on a surface. So this is all that I need. So I'm just gonna click outside here and it turns black. Now, to get it on, I don't have a means of actually getting it like on the line. So I've got to do my best here to select this. And when this goes to the four arrows, I can move it. And I'm just going to go over the top of it as close as I can. And I'm going to eyeball it in place. And that's what I did for mine. Okay. And then I can click outside of it here and it's placed. I personally like it on the surface like this, as opposed to pointing, because it's always good where I have my dimension for the thickness of that plate. One side, of that, one side of that plate has to be flat. I like to have this all in the same area. If I, do the, um, if I do the note up here, it's just like not by the dimension. So it's just my preferred way of doing it. Is the other way okay? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's to the standard, but I'm not a big fan of it. But that doesn't mean it would be wrong. You could do it that way if you would like. Now I need to add a datum because once this gets nice and flat, now that's gonna be datum A for um, the other uh, feature control frames that are on here. So to get the datum in place, to the right of that geometric tolerance, there's a datum feature symbol. So I'm gonna click on that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just get by my box here and I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna go down below it, okay? Don't go above it. It's all, it, the convention is normally down below. And then once I get it where I've got, a, you, you have to have a landing in between here. There has to be a length. So when it gets to be a nice length, I'm just gonna hit my middle mouse button and it, it's gonna put the, the first letter of the alphabet. If you wanna change that, you can do that here, right up here, okay? But it is A for me, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna left click outside of it and I'm, I'm all set. Now, if I wanted to move this, I can just reselect it. It's gonna go back into that menu and I have the opportunity to move it, you know, wherever I want it to go. So I'm not stuck, if you would, uh, when I when I create it, all right? You can go back and edit that if you need to. All right, so that's my, that's my flatness, okay? I'm gonna go up to the top here and put in the next feature control frame, which is going to be the perpendicularity of four thousandths to datum A and B, and then it's gonna become C. I actually put, should put B in then, huh? Maybe I'll put B in, we'll go in order. So we'll, we'll do this one actually first. So we'll really do that very same thing that we just saw. So I'm gonna do geometric tolerance. Now it remembers that I had flatness from the last time. So now I'm gonna go over here. Oh. I'm gonna try to place it as close as possible on the surface there. Okay, it's, it's not. So I'm gonna try to grab it one more time. Just and I'll go in a little bit. I think I have to be on the on the actual 
Okay. All right. So that's, that's pretty darn close. And I think close enough that on a PDF, it's not really going to show. So that one needs to be, this needs to be, before I go any further, this needs to be perpendicularity. It needs to be to four and we have to have a datum and that datum is going to be datum A. And then notice that it's going to add the box. So I've got to move this anyway. And I'm going to go like this and I'm going to go over right about there. Okay. I feel good about that. Now, once this is perpendicular to datum A, it becomes datum B. So I'm going to add a datum feature symbol. Once this activates, I'm just going to left click and then now I'm going to place right mouse button. And because I used A already, it knows that B is my next one. And that, is, that looks good. Okay. Gosh, this is going so much better than it was yesterday. <laughs> I can't believe it. I, don't, I shouldn't have said it out loud because now I probably put the curse on it. Okay, so let's do the next one, geometric tolerance. This one is going to be another perpendicularity. I'm going to zoom in here and try to get it as close as possible again. Now, if you wanted to use the, um, if you wanted to use the leader, you can do that too by selecting the actual uh, surface itself. Um, it's perpendicular four thousandths to datum A, but also now I have to add a second datum, and that's going to be B in the second part here. I'm going to click outside and look at that. There it is. Now, this one, I need to add a datum symbol, click on that, and I'm going to go, I'm going to go up with this one, okay, I'm going to go up, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here, go up a little bit, middle mouse button, and that's going to be C. So, again, if you do them in order, you don't have to worry about changing them. Okay, now, the last feature control frame that I need to do is put the position underneath this this uh, uh, diameter. I'm going to click on this first because I don't like how the arrows are on the inside here. So when I click on this, I'm going to actually just out, click on this. You'll notice that I have the options for changing my arrowhead. So I'm going to flip the arrows here so that it's just pointing to the circle. That looks better. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my feature control frame right underneath here. So I'm going to go back to, I don't need dimension here, I'm going to go back to annotate. And I'm going to do geometric tolerance, and I'm going to place it right there. Okay. Now, this time the symbol, it remembers the perpendicularity, but I want this to be position. I want to position those four holes. And in this case, I have four thousandths, but it, because these are cylindrical features, um, I need this there, there to be a diameter symbol. And actually, I'm going to be putting 31 thousandths. So I need to add a diameter symbol here. And to do that, I'm going to go to symbols. And I'm just going to pick the uh, diameter symbol. Let me go past it. Oh, here it is. Diameter symbol right here. Now, yeah, it's kind of mad at me because for some reason it put the one thousandth of an inch. So just uh, arrow back, get that out of there. And then the number needs to be 0 0.031. Okay. And then before I go off of here, I also need to add the maximum material condition modifier. Click it on that. And so everything in here is going to be in my um, my tolerance box, and you can see that it's updating it as we're doing it live. So that looks good. Now I also need to add A, B, and then I have to add a tertiary datum as C. Now none of these get the maximum material modifier because these are all surfaces. Okay, these are all surfaces, so they don't they're not applicable for that. So you can see that the C popped in. And as I look at it, I think I'm all set. So I can just click, left click outside of that. And now it's part of my, now it's part of my drawing. Okay, now I've got my dimensions all in place and I want to relook at how am I positioned on my uh, piece of paper here. So it feels like I've got a little bit of space on the top and less space on the bottom. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually um, go back to layout. I'm going to unlock my views, okay? unlock the view movement. So notice that when it's locked, it's gray. When I unlock it, I toggle it off, it's white. So now when I click on my front view, and the front view is the one that you want to do to control this because it's where everything is anchored from. If I do my right view, it's not gonna wanna move up and down. It's only gonna go left and right. So I've gotta do my front view here because that's where everything is kind of based off of. So I'm just gonna go up about this far. And yeah, I think that's better. But You'll notice that my GDNT didn't go along with it. <laughs> so I've got to move my GDNT. I'm going to click outside of there to deactivate, and I'm going to click on 
<laughs> Click on this guy. There we go. And I'm going to move. Oh, I don't like where that where that's at. Positions itself. That right about when I'm over the top, right there. Okay, so that one's there. And I've got to go over here. Left click on this one. When I've got my four arrows, I go in here. I'm going to go a little bit closer. Oh, that looks pretty darn good. Okay. And then I've just got to position these two yet. So I'll click on this one, get my four arrows, and right about there. And then lastly, I'm going to, all you need to do is kind of eyeball this one in the position. There we go. When it's red and you're over the top of it, that's when you're safe to like move it. Right about there. Okay. I think that looks good. Now, you'll notice in the side view here where I, where I presume that there is hidden lines. When I zoom in, these are like, like grayed out, okay? But as I've told you, one way that you can just check to, to see if everything looks good before you print off or you release things, I'm going to lock the views in place here so that they don't move around. I'm going to first do a real quick save. And then I'm going to go to print. Okay, so print and then print up here. Click on that. And I just want to preview this. Okay, now you'll notice I only get portion of it, but if I do my roller and go in and out, then see, you get to see the whole sheet of paper. So as I look at this right now, I think it looks pretty great. Okay, happy with it. So I'm going to say, okay, I can close. Well, actually, before I do that, I'm going to take like a, that snipping tool and I'm going, to, I'm going to get my picture here so that I can import this into a document. So I'm going to use the Windows Shift S key and I'm going to left and drag, left mouse button drag and then release when I get my full drawing in. Okay. Then as we've been doing, you want to open a document, drop this in there, paste it in there and that's going to be your first tutorial. Then you're going to do your second and third tutorial all in the same document, probably on separate pages because these are a little bit big. And, um, and then you're going to be submitting that document as a PDF. You're going to convert it to a PDF or export it as a PDF with these um, snippets on there or the, um, the, I don't know what you call them, the little screen screenshots. And then you're going to upload that one document to the tutorial Dropbox in, in Blackboard. Any questions when I talk about that, do I need to go through that? You guys have been doing that. So I think, I think, you're, I think you're solid on that procedure. Now I can just close out of this because this is just to kind of get my uh, snippet. So snip it over there. Don't snip it when you're here with all these little lines and such. Do it in that preview mode so it looks like an official drawing and it's done. And um, once I go back here, then um, I feel like I'm good. So I can just do a file save. And then um, as you know, Creo like saves all those, those versions. So the best thing to do once you know that it's like in its final form, you're gonna go into um, manage file down here, go to manage file, click on that. And you wanna delete all the old versions and click on that. And, and then hit yes. And so it keeps the most recent one, the very last one that you saved, but it gets rid of all those previous ones. So that's a really good way to kind of make sure that you're cleaning up rather than going back into the, um, back into the directory and trying to figure out which one is the most recent one. And then once you have that saved, you can do a close. And, and then before you start a new thing, if you don't want to go out of Creo and come back in and start a fresh session, what you can do is you can go down here to manage session and erase not displayed. So there's the stuff in the background that's going on. So we're just going to hit OK. And then now it should be all fresh and clean like you would have you know, gone out and come back in. So that, that is your um, cover plate tutorial, all right? Um, let's do the round cover tutorial guide. Uh, tutorial and uh, let's see how this one goes. I'm kind of tempting fate here. I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little bit further. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna go out of Creo officially, okay? And I'm gonna start a fresh session back up. So the round cover tutorial is what I'm looking at here. Now the round cover tutorial is the last tutorial in Chapter 12 for you guys to do. And again, you do have to do this for uh, part of your grade. And um, you do need to create the actual part first. I did that already. So my focus here is going to be on 
getting the drawing in its final form. So I'm going to select my working directory, go here, I'm on my H drive, Creo, Creo 1. And I've been keeping everything all in the same directory. You don't want to create subdirectories in there because um, like for, for the borders and everything, I have everything all in the same one. Otherwise, you've got to keep copying because you have to be in that one directory with your part, your assembly, um, your drawing borders, the format uh, sheets, and the template you know, for the borders. They all have to be in the same place. So I haven't been, cre I haven't been creating any subdirectories at all. I've just been keeping everything in that generic working directory, actually, and I still call it Creo 1. It was from the first the first class and I just stay right in there. So let's create a new, now again, I drew my part already. I'm gonna do a new drawing and it's gonna be called round cover, okay. Click, oh, it does already exist. So I'm gonna put a one in back of it, okay. And I'm gonna to get to the model. So it's gonna be round cover, my part, PRT extension, okay. And then I'm going to navigate to, um, this one is a, again a two view, it's not a three view, so it's the LTC A2 view. And I'm gonna hit okay, or I'm sorry, open, and then okay. All right, so first of all, we wanna clean this up, so I'm gonna get rid of um, the, the axes and the planes. And then I'm gonna go down at the bottom here to annot annotation, and I'm going to do my left click and, um, in this view, and I'm going to select everything, I'm going to hit the delete key. All right, and that just kind of gets everything cleaned up. I need to go back to general before I do anything else. And then I'm going to change my scale here to 0.5. Oopsie, double click on that scale down in the lower left, 0.5. Okay, so now right now these are locked. So if, if I click on this, and I go to um, lock view movement, it's gonna, and I toggle it off so it's not gray. Now I can, now I can move these views so that um, I can separate them so it makes a little bit more sense. And I have room for my dimensions. Okay. All right. And I'm gonna relock it so I don't accidentally kind of push things around once I have them in place. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to um, put in our dimensions for this one. So here you'll notice that um, I want to add in my center line. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to do my add annotations. Okay. So here I'm going to go over to my center lines and you'll notice that it puts in the center line for the bolt circle and then all of the center lines for each one of my holes here as well and the big center line. So I'm gonna just click on every single, oops, every single one of those. I'm gonna hit apply and that's good because I want those all in there. Then I'm gonna go over to, and I'm gonna cancel this out. I'm gonna go over to my right. I'm gonna do the same thing, show the annotation. And here, just looking if there's any overlapping, they are not. So I can show all of these and apply and hit cancel. Okay, so my center lines are in. Center lines I think are easier on the part pieces than they are on the assembly drawings because the assembly drawings you have to pick and get into the right part, okay? All right, so there we go for center lines. Now we're ready to look at putting our um, dimensions on. So we're gonna, I'm gonna click on this front view. I'm gonna go to show annotations. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to the annotate over here as well. I'm gonna go to the dimension tab. And here is where I've, I've got to kind of, you know, see where I'm at. So I'm gonna click each one of the dimensions that I know I'm gonna use. And they may or may not be in the actual drawing itself. This one. The last one that's there. That one and I'm going to do apply and then go out. Now, I need to kind of move these out of the way. And it's remembering from when I worked on this before, it's remembering my, um, my dimensions. So I'm going to take a little bit of time to um, kind of start these over. So let me get them into the form that I would expect. All 
that they would come in at, and I'll show you how to get them where they need to go. I want to I want to show you. Whoopsie. One more time. All right. No. <laughs> One more. All right. Now, so these are these are the dimensions how they came in, and I just moved them so that they're we just kind of have room here. So first of all, I want to get I want to actually put. This dimension, okay, which is in its normal, so it's at 7.998 on the outside diameter here. I want this dimension to actually be over in the right side view, okay, because I don't want to show it in this view. It's an external uh, uh, diameter, and I want to show it in its rectangular view. So I'm going to select that dimension, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to annotate, okay, while it's selected, and I'm going to say move to view. So when I move to view, I'm then going to select the view that I want it to go to, and it went over here, okay? Now, it looks a little wonky, so all I need to do is I need to just kind of move it around, select it, and I'm moving it around, and I'm going to put it like in the middle here. It also needs to be a limit dimension. So while it's selected, I'm going to go to that dim dimension uh, 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 tab, and I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to change, change this to limits, okay? Now, I already changed it from the last time, so it is remembering my last one, but all you want to do is in the upper one here, put the 8 inches, 8.000, and then the 7.995. And then just be sure that your rounding dimensions are to the three-place decimal, and that's where you do that underneath this one right here, okay? Um, and then I think that's it for the dimension part of it, so I can click away from it, all right? So that's there. Then the next thing that I want to do is I want to do my um, six inch diameter here. This six inch diameter needs to be a basic dimension because it gives us the actual location, if you would, for the holes that are going to be positioned. So any locational dimension that has to do with those holes has to be a basic dimension. The basic dimension is a box around it, and it says don't look to the title block. Look to the feature control frame for the tolerance instead. So we have two basic dimensions here, so the angle one and the six. Now, the six, the BC after it means bolt circle, okay, bolt circle. So I like putting that on there so that you understand what, what it's there for. So I'm going to double-click on this. And I'm going to first go over to my tolerance here, make it basic. And then I'm going to go over to uh, dimension text. And after the dimension this time, I'm going to put plus or a space and then BC for bolt circle. And that's a standard like call out or a standard abbreviation. Then I'm going to go over here by my 60 degrees. I'm going to click on that. That one becomes basic as well. And then the dimension text beforehand is going to be a six by space, and then the dimension, and I'm going to click outside here, and that's in place now for us as well. Maybe move it a little bit away from the part. And this one probably can get a little bit closer. There. Okay. Then I need to deal with my um, diameter here. This one's kind of a long, a long deal. So if I look back at the call out. I need it to be six by, and then I need the uh, limits to be top bottom through. I have a counter sink, 0.88 by 82 degrees counter sink, and then um, and then you'll notice that I'm going to have the feature control frames below. Actually, I'm a little redundant on that counter sink. I actually don't need the actual counter sink after. I can just leave it as the um, the symbol. So I'll, I'll do that here. So I'm going to double click on that dimension. It's already set to limits, so that's good. And I have 0.508 to 0.503 are my values in here, okay, that I actually input, three place decimal. And then now I'm going to go to display. Click on display, and all I'm going to do is check this ISO tolerance display style, okay, and then it goes top to bottom. 
Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to dimension text right away. I'm going to go, I'm going to arrow over to before the diameter symbol, and I'm going to put in six by space. And then after the diameter symbol, I'm going to go space and through. Okay. Then I'm going to go after the dimension. Okay. So after the dimension text, this is everything I'm going to go, I'm going to hit enter, and this is going to be a next line. Now, what's nice is they have the symbols down here. So I'm going to pick out my counter bore symbol, or I'm sorry, counter sink symbol. And then I'm going to say, okay, diameter 0.88 space by 82 and then degrees. And that's all I need to do because I actually put countersink in there as a note, but, um, but the symbol takes care of this. So when I look here, I like to look outside here just to see, and, and oops, I've got, I've got the position, not the diameter. So I need this guy, pick the wrong one. There we go, that's correct. Diameter of 0.88. I'm gonna click out here and that looks good. Okay, that looks good. Now I need to add my two feature control frames underneath and I look like I'm gonna have a little bit of issue with space. So I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna go back to layout and I'm gonna unlock the view and I'm going to take my left mouse button and just drag this down a little bit because I, I, I need a little bit of space at the bottom but I actually could put the 0.75 up if I need to. So I'm gonna go down a little bit with this and then I have the opportunity to move my note when I get the four. I can move this up a little bit higher. And as long as I'm here, I'm gonna put the arrows to the outside. So I flipped my arrows. Now I have room for, I'm gonna scooch this kind of over and down. And now I have room to put my feature control frames. So I'm gonna go back to annotate, geometric tolerance, and I'm gonna put my position in first. So the position symbol is there. And then I need to do um, the diameter symbol. So I'm going to put in symbol, diameter, point, and it's zero, zero, three. And then after, we're going to put in the maximum material condition modifier, which is the M right there. And then datum wise, I need to put A, it's a surface. And then I need to put B, okay? B, I didn't put that feature control frame in yet, but it's gonna be this outside diameter here. So it has an opportunity because it's a feature of size, we're gonna add the maximum material condition modifier in back of it. And I think that's it, okay? So that looks good, that looks good. Underneath here, I'm gonna add a perpendicularity. So you'll notice that we're refining on perpendicularity here and um, so another ge geometric tolerance, feature control frame, and I'm just gonna, I don't know if it's gonna let me, I'm just gonna go put it down here and then I'll place it afterwards. So perpendicularity, 0 0.00001, and then I want it perpendicular to just data A. Okay, there we go. And then now I just need to snug it right next to, I get this guy right underneath here. And this is the only way we can really do it. So try to be as precise as possible, but there isn't a way to like snap to those and, and have them activate. Okay, so the last one I need to do is put my feature control frame in here for my, um, my diameter. So I'm gonna add a feature, oopsie, go back to annotate to activate that. I'm going to put this down in here, and it's going to be a position tolerance, position, and it's going to be a diameter of 0.003, so symbol, diameter, 0.003, and then maximum material condition, and datum A is primary, datum B. Oh, that's not right. <gasps> I made a mistake. I'm gonna have to correct that. I can't have datum B and then it's called datum B. So it's just gonna be positioned to datum A. That's it. It just needs to be basically, we could actually change that to perpendicularity, but we'll leave it at position. No, we're gonna put it at perpendicularity. That's really the right one. So perpendicularity, a diameter of 3,000, maximum material condition to A, that's it. And then it becomes 
datum B. So I'm going to scooch this out a little bit. And then we are going to add a datum to the bottom of this. So I'm going to correct this guide. I'm going to put the, uh, the one that I have here as the actual. And then this becomes datum B. Oops, oopsie. Go datum B. And then I want to move this over a little bit. There we go. Okay, all right. So there we go. I, as I look here, I think this could move over just a little bit. So layout, pull this over a little bit, and I'll probably have to move something. So, and this is where you get to play around. <laughs> you get to, you, uh, you'll get really good at kind of maneuvering these things. But I will say, I teach, um, in the more or in the afternoons, I teach AutoCAD for the first year students. And when I'm, although, okay, Creo has been like my nemesis lately, and it hasn't been cooperating the way I want it to, but I will say, I like dealing with Creo more than I like drawing each and every entity for AutoCAD. <laughs> so, uh, so it is a step up, although it hasn't been, it hasn't been my friend lately. Um, I, I do actually like Creo better than AutoCAD, just because. Okay, as I look here, I'm gonna just kind of glance, oh, I need my radius and I need to move, my, I see I don't have my, my little spaces here. So let me uh, click on my eight inch dimension and I need a little space here, right? Top and bottom, good drafting. So make sure you do that. I do look for that. That's one of my, my little pet peeves, if you would. Connie had nails on the chalkboard for certain things, but I like to have, if you, if you forget to put the space there, I will call you out on it, probably deduct a point-ish. And uh, so make sure that you're uh, you know, cleaning these dimensions up. And then I just need to add the uh, radius for this guy. So I'm hoping if I go to annotation, there it is, that's the one I want. Apply, pencil, there it is. And there's only one, so it's just the radius of six because it's just around that top portion of the of the cover. And I think I'm good to go. I'm almost kind of scared to say that out loud. Oh, the 0.75. I need the uh, I need the width dimension, don't I? So let me um, scooch this over just a little bit, kind of make it a little bit more flat. And I do have one more dimension to do. And I'll go over here. On that one, apply and cancel. And now I'm going to switch this all the way up, all the way up here. There. Oh, I didn't. I didn't put flatness on here either. I was not even close to being ready to be done. It's just being a little eager, I think. Up a little bit. Okay. Now we got to add our flatness. Oopsie. Got to add our flatness. We'll just put it for right now. Um, flatness. And this is going to be two thousands. Two. And no datum. This is a form tolerance. It'll let you put it in, but it's not correct to do that. So flatness of, and I'm going to attach it in the way that I like to. So I'm gonna put it right at the very tippy top of this dimension. Then we'll call out the, um, and then we'll call out the datum. And we'll put it on top here. And it's data main. Okay. Now I think, I'm done. So I changed it up just a bit. And um, what I'll do is I'll put this version out as our guide because I did find that I did have a mistake with the uh, datum. So not perfect, but uh, we do want to get it. We do want to get it good. Okay. So let me hit my save. And as I'm glancing here, I think I look pretty good. Look pretty good. And then I'm going to do one quick check. I'm going to do print and print. 
I'm going to do a preview and just zoom roller in and out here and you'll get the full effect and I think it looks amazing. Okay, so now I'm going to use this as my window shift S to get the screenshot of that area click and and then this is what you would put into your document and then upload um, all three of them in one document to your tutorials um, Dropbox. Now let me just take a real quick peek. I um, want to let you know when these tutorials are due. So if I go back to our course calendar, the tutorials are actually due on Thursday. I think that's a I think that's a little aggressive. I'm going to switch it to Monday. How does that sound? We'll put them on Mondays, Chapter 12 tutorials at the end of the day. So 11:59 at the end of the day on Monday. So kind of our kind of our normal time, you know, on Mondays to have that due. And then um, and then what we'll do is tomorrow we'll start looking at the the problems that I'm going to assign for this chapter as well. Um, I have them picked out if we go to if you wanted to start working on them, but just know that I will be doing the demos and giving you guides on each one so that this uh, directory is going to grow your um, your problems. I didn't put the Dropbox out here yet, but your problems are going to be these five, 12, one, two, three, five and six. Okay, but again, I will be doing the uh, demos and the guides for you so that you know what the final products should look like. Okay, so um, so that's what I have for today. Today went so much better, and I'm glad. I am super glad that uh, Josh was here to, you know, know and get maybe maybe get his faith back in me again. Because <laughs> uh, yesterday was uh, catastrophic, <laughs> but it went better today. So that is that is good. So I'm going to stop sharing, and I am going to stop recording.